Well, I, I must say that uh, after Gert's talk, I feel thoroughly intimidated. Uh, I was really feeling incredibly intimidated until he pointed out that all this post-rationalization came after they designed the car. And that slightly reassured me because I felt beforehand I was really thinking, my God, you know, I never learned any of this stuff. And uh, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about, first of all, uh, I just did a little size comparison to form a link between where we were. And if you can see these five pixels up, pixels up on the left-hand <laughs> corner there, that's a mini. <laughs> and I amused myself by going through a few sort of uh, comparisons. And I, I approximated the 5.5 the cubic meters of a mini, which I think is, I may be wrong, but it's the right order of magnitude, with 21,500 cubic meters of the yacht, uh, and the volume difference. And the weight difference is 1 to 2,500. And then you find a very interesting thing is the cost per kilo is really very similar. I calculate about 60 pounds a kilo for the car and 40 pounds a kilo for the ship. So immediately, it's in the same order of magnitude, which I thought was fascinating. And then I went a little bit further and started looking at um, fuel performance and that sort of thing. I mean, the cost of a fuel tank full in the Mini, say, at a pound a gallon is about 40 pounds. We've got 700,000 liters, which you can buy cheaper, but it's still 420,000 pounds for one fuel tank. <laughs> However, we can go 4,000 miles on that, uh, which is pretty good, and it's with 7,000 tons. So as Nick pointed out to me earlier, perhaps, we haven't, I haven't done the numbers, it might actually be more efficient in terms of moving a kilo for, over a given distance. So I think it's, a, it's an interesting, an interesting uh, comparison between the two to form a link. Um, and I also thought I would just say my, my favorite cars of all time start off with you know, Bucky Fuller's Damaxian car, which I always felt was the most amazing vehicle. And I really liked the Tatra, which, because it was, had some elements of that. And, and this, which seemed to me as close to the Damaxian car as anybody ever got to building, which was the Fiat Multipla. And I don't know whether Gert would agree that they were interesting cars. I mean, in marketing terms, probably an enormous failure, but I th think we're... They were still, I enjoyed them. And of course, uh, as I'm very much involved in, in sort of making things work and form and function and that sort of thing, I adore these two, these two classic vehicles. Um, I, I'm going to sort of, it's a slight digression. I'm going to talk about a various, I'm going to go a little bit into the history of my, what are the things I've designed. But one of the things I wanted to tell you about was some, some of the idols, some of the people who motivate me. And one of my absolute idols is Paxton, who designed this building uh, for the, in Hyde Park up the road here. Uh, and this building was designed and built in something like 18 months. And it was the most amazing feature. And I show this detail, which I don't know. Does anybody, has anybody in this room ever seen this detail before? Nobody. OK. Just quickly back, the, the roof of this building has what's called ridge and valley uh, glazing. So that up here, you've got just a, it's a glass roof that is in, essentially flat. And because it's essentially flat, you've got the dra a whole drainage problem. And the whole thing is supported by a network of trusses and so on. So you come down to this detail here, and you find that this is the glazing up here. And it's supported by this gutter, which has um, here's a larger version of it. It has one gutter for the rainwater and another little one for the condensation on the inside. And that is supported on another structure which has taking rainwater from another direction, here and here. So you have a rainwater coming in four directions, and it's a structural load-bearing member. And all the rain, this rainwater can go down here, this goes down here, that goes down there. And uh, the whole thing takes the rainwater down a cast iron column, which was a variable wall thickness, uh, to take the loads as it goes down the building. And I've yet to find a better detail in any building anywhere in the world than this. And it was designed and built in 18 months. And I think there's a lesson for us all in that. And this was the build process. You know, the guys in a little trolley, complete with cover, putting in uh, you know, acres and acres of glass. Another idol of exactly the same period was Brunel, um, uh, who, because he was a man who did everything uh, from you know, bridges, railway stations, the railway, and then going on ships. I mean, his vision was to go from Paddington, design the railway, go to Bristol, design the docks in Bristol, then design the ship to go to the, to the States. Uh, the Maidenhead Bridge, the arch was so flat that everybody thought that it wouldn't work. And he played a joke by leaving the shuttering in position. Um, 
for months and months and months because they all thought he was frightened that it would fall down until one day the, the, it blew down in a windstorm because the shuttering actually wasn't touching the thing. And it's still taking high-speed trains, an amazing thing. And this was his final ship, which was sort of vastly bigger than any other ship built at the time, um, which was an amazing feat. And this, this, but this is the symbol, of, for me, of Brunel as, the, as a, an ingenious and uh, lateral-thinking man. He was playing games with his, with his grandchildren, uh, flicking up coins and catching them in, in, the, in their mouths, and he got a coin stuck in his throat, and he was having, having great difficulty breathing. They got doctors and everything. Nobody could get it out. So he sat down, designed a pair of forceps, sent it out to a toolmaker who made this, brought it back, and the doctor got it out. And I think <laughs> that is a really good designer. Um, and interestingly enough, I found when I was doing the, these, this, this slide and the following slide, and it shows what's going on absolutely today. This says it was designed and constructed by Scott Russell, and the engineer was Brunel. And this one says it was designed by Brunel, and the engineer was Scott Russell. <laughs> so uh, it will be familiar to many of you, I'm engineering students, that sort of problem. And then, of course, Eiffel, for all his amazing structures, um, and the Eiffel Tower, and so on. And this, because I've just photographed this recently, and it is the most spectacular. If ever you're driving down through France to go and see the Garibay Viaduct, I think it is the most marvellous thing. And particularly this access ladder. Look at this. I mean, this is absolutely ravishingly beautiful. It is an amazing, an amazing thing. So, I mean, Gert was talking from a very sort of, uh, you know, theoretical point of view. Um, I've just got some reflections about what is the appropriate form, what is fitness for purpose, and I'm sort of fascinated by. Sort of, sort of objects, um, and this, for example, the glider is something that Foster, every, every publication Foster talks about gliders, and, and he flew like gliders, and I, I, I learned also to become a glider pilot and, because they are such beautiful things. But what I find interesting is if you then sort of look at other forms of, uh, you know, vehicles for flying, the form changes completely, hence the man-powered flight, this is man-powered flight, and it changes completely. Solar plowed flight, again, completely different, and I think in a most amazing vehicle. Um, this is the, you know, sink, the record holder for going round the, round the world with a single jet engine. Um, and another amazing man who, I, if you don't know about, I would certainly recommend you study is Bert Rutan, who designed these things. And then, finally, when I, you know, when I was a kid, I, I had the concept of a rocket was like, you know, the Tantan thing here or the, v, you know, the V2. And, it, you know, they had big fins on and they went up to space. And I actually met a guy once who, who had worked at Pinamunda working with these. And it was the time.